Okay class, today we're in section 4.3, write linear equations in point slope form. 4.3, write linear equations in point slope form. Before, you wrote linear equations in slope intercept form. Now you will write linear equations in point slope form. Key vocabulary, point slope form. Consider the line that passes through point 2, 3 with a slope of 1 half. Let x, y, where x is equal to 2, be another point on the line. You can write an equation relating x and y using the slope formula with x1, y1 equaling 2, 3, and x sub 2, y sub 2 is equal to x and y. Write the slope formula. m is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Substitute 1 half for m, 3 for y sub 1, and 2 for x sub 1. So you end up with 1 half is equal to y minus 3 over x minus 2. Multiply each side by x minus 2. So you multiply this side by x minus 2 up here, and this side by x minus 2 over here. So on this side, you end up with 1 half times x minus 2 is equal to y minus 3. So the equation in point slope form is y minus 3 is equal to 1 half times x minus 2. Key concept, point slope form. The point slope form of the equation of the non-vertical line through a given point x sub 1, y sub 1, with a slope of m is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. Once again, y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. And this formula is called the point slope formula. So, along with the slope intercept formula, y equals mx plus b, and the slope itself, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, along with this equation, y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1, all this must be committed to memory. It will not be given to you on your end of the course exam, also known as the EOC. Example 1. Write an equation in point slope form. Write an equation in point slope form of the line that passes through the point 4, negative 3 and has a slope of 2. First, write the point slope form. y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. Substitute 2 for m, 4 for x sub 1, and negative 3 for y sub 1. So, y sub 1, that becomes a negative 3. m, we said was 2. And x, we said was 4. After doing so, you finish the problem. That's it. Alright, now to help out those who may be confused going from here to here, this is what happened. You have your original equation, y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. Alright, like right here. Now notice how here it ended with a positive 3. This is how that happened. The minus sign is in the equation. The value for y was a negative 3. So right there you should have y minus a negative 3. And that's equal to m times x. And our x was the positive 4. Minus sign is in the equation, so we put the 4 there. Now what's a negative times a negative? That's a positive. So that's how they ended up with a positive 3 there. So we get y plus 3 is equal to m. And don't forget the m value was 2 that was given to us. Alright, and so that's how you go from there to there. Once again, all of this they expect you to know already. Also, while we're here, it's important to be able to read going backwards. In other words, if they gave you y plus 3 is equal to 2 times x minus 4, you should be able to tell them what the initial value for y was and what the initial value for x was. 
for example, if this ends up being a positive 3 at the end here, that means that initially the 3 had to be negative. So it's the opposite of what you see. So once again, if this ended up being a positive 3, that means that 3 had to initially be negative. Because that's the only way you're going to come out with a negative times a negative giving you a positive. See how this is a negative 4? If this is a negative 4, that means initially it had to be a positive 4. Once again, you're going to, re you're going to get problems where you start here and you have to tell them and, or interpret yourself what took place initially. Once again, if this ends up being a positive 3, that means you started out with a negative 3. If this ends up being a negative 4, that means you started out with a positive 4. Okay, what I was just discussing in the latter part of example 1, we're now going to bring to light in example 2. Alright, example 2, graph an equation in point slope form. Graph the equation y plus 2 is equal to 2 thirds times x minus 3. Solution, because the equation is in point slope form, you know that the line has a slope of 2 thirds and passes through the point 3, 2. Now, how do we know it passes through 3, 2? Because <clears throat> for our x value, if it's a negative 3 here, that means that it had to start out being a positive 3. And for our y value, if this is a positive 2 here, that means it had to start out being a negative 2. So we're going to plot the point 3, negative 2. All right, so x is 3. Y is a negative 2, so we go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So we plot that point right there. Now, right now, after plotting that point, then we're going to count the slope to find the next point. A slope is 2 over 3, rise over run. So we ended up right here. So we're going to count the rise, 1, 2, and we're going to count the run, 1, 2, 3. And there's our second point. So now this point here and this point here and we can draw our graph or draw our line to make our graph. All right, now once again, for those of us who may be, may be confused on how we got x being 3 and y being a negative 2 for the initial values, let's break it down for you again. Now, right here, the equation is in point slope form. This is point slope form. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. All right, so in other words, that y goes with that y the y goes with that 2, m goes with the 2 thirds, x goes with that x, and x of 1 goes with that 3. By the way, I should label this as S, y sub 1 goes with that 2. So this is what we end up with. So this is what we ended up with. What must have happened in between there for this to end up being a positive 2? For, the, for this to end up being a positive 2, since I got a negative sign in my equation, that means the y value had to be a negative 2. Because a negative times a negative is the only way you're going to come out with it being positive with you having a minus sign right there. Now here, we ended up with y being, I mean x being a positive 3. Well, the only way that's going to happen is we got m times x minus 3. Look at that original formula. The minus sign is there. So in order for this to be negative, that meant that the 3 had to be positive starting off. So my initial value here had to be negative 2. And my initial value here has to be a positive 3. Example 3. Use point slope form to write an equation. Write an equation in point slope form of the line shown. So from the graph that's shown right here, they want us to write an equation in, in point slope form. What the first thing we got to do is define the slope because don't forget here's our equation y minus y sub 1 is equal to m that's our slope times x minus x1 and no matter what method we use method 1 or method 2 right we have to find the slope all right so to find the slope everybody should notice by now you locate any two points on this line any two all right so the book chose to use this value and this value negative 1 3 1 1 
Okay, now as we've shown you countless times before, to be safe with this, to be sure you reduce your errors, label your coordinates. All right, now the book chose these two points, and based on the way they have the example, they have this has been the x2, x sub 2, y sub 2 value. This is the x of 1, y sub 1 value. Now remember, you can have this labeled as your x of 1, y sub 1, and this labeled as your x of 2, y sub 2. As long as you put them in the right order over here, and you do your basic math correctly, your answer will be exactly the same. So, once again, y sub 2 is 3. That's where that came from. y sub 1 is 1. That's where that came from. x of 2 is a negative 1. That's where that came from. x of 1 is 1. That's where that came from. So now you do your basic math. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. A negative 1 minus 1 is equal to a negative 2. 2 divided by a negative 2 is equal to a negative 1. So our slope then is going to be a negative 1, or we know by now, we can simply say a negative 1 over 1. Also remember, you can find the slope by simply counting. Rise over run. If I went rise over 1, I would go 1, 2. My rise is 2. And then 1, 2. My run would be a negative 2. So once again, rise, 1, 2. It gives me that 2. And then from here, 1, 2. That's a negative 2. That's how that came about. If I were to go down, I would go rise would be 1, 2. That means my rise would be a negative 2. My rise would be a negative 2. And then my run would be 1, 2, a positive 2. Notice that still equals to a negative 1. Also notice if I were to pick two other points, let's say here and here, my slope should be exactly the same. Let's say I picked here and I picked there. Look what happens. 1, 2, 3. My rise is a positive 3. And then 1, 2, 3. My run is a negative 3. That's still going to give me a negative 1. If I were to count down going this way, these two would flip. And I would still come out with a negative 1. Step 2. Write the equation in point so form. You can use either given point. Method 1. Use negative 1, 3. So using this point right here. y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1 y minus what is my y value? 3. So y minus 3. What was my slope? A negative 1. Now all they put there was just a negative sign. Remember there's a 1 in between there that you don't see but it's implied. So negative means um, negative 1. Once again negative means negative 1. Alright so right there that right there would be a Hold on one second while the screen adjusts. All right, so right there we would have a negative one. All right, so one could be put right there for those who don't get it. So that's a negative one right there. All right, now, so that would be one answer. The other answer will be using the other point, 1, 1. So either one of these could be the answer. So once again, method 2, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. All right, what is my y value? My y value is a positive 1, so put a 1 there, end up with minus 1. What is my x value? My x value is also a positive 1, so I end up putting the 1 there in place of x1. So my equation there is y minus 1 is equal to a negative 1. My slope is a negative 1 times x minus 1. So, once again, we have two equations. Okay, now the reason why both the, these equations are equivalent is because if you were to put them in slope-intercept form and you would solve for y and put it in the form y is equal to mx plus b, you would come up with y is equal to x, a negative x plus 2 and y is equal to a negative x plus 2. 